This is the last week I will be preaching this series, The Year of Jubilee. This is part four. Brother Ken will have all the DVDs, and I've, I've watched all of these messages already over. And I'm going to encourage all of you who have a DVD, DVD player, get one of the DVDs and refresh your memory of what's been said. I've said things in the first two weeks I didn't even remember saying. I was like, oh, I might want to play that clip to remind everybody about that. So get those DVDs. They'll be already next Sunday. They're absolutely free. Get one. You use it throughout the year to encourage yourself and remind yourself that we're living in Jubilee. Amen? Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 25, verse number 8. This is where we've taken our text each week of this four-part series. Everybody say this. I'm going to help. I'm going to help. I want you to, everybody was like, I ain't saying that. <laughs> I am not, no, I'm not going to trap you into cutting the grass, although we need to clean the yard up a little bit. Got to tear that porch down on the parsons as well. But that's not what I'm talking about. Say this. I'm going to help. I'll preach or preach. I'll preach preach. All right, Leviticus chapter 25, verse number 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. You shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a Jubilee unto you. And you shall return the Every man into his possessions, and you shall return every man into his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of the vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the incense uh, increase thereof out of the field. In this jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Let's pray. Father, I am so thankful for the atmosphere of worship that's been created in this house. And I pray, God, that you would help our minds now to be focused, help our hearts to be ready to receive. I pray, God, that hard hearts would be broken, that cold hearts would be warm. God, that people who are just unconcerned would be awakened in this service. I pray, God, for a divine anointing to help me preach this message. God, I need something better than myself. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need you to teach through me and make me usable, make, ply, make me be pliable so you can mold me and shape me to what I need to be to deliver this message this morning. I'm expecting you, God, to show up and move in our altar services. I pray, God, that the year of Jubilee will ring loud in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As I continue this series, this is the last Sunday. Next Sunday, I will not start a new series. I'm going to be, next Sunday, be preaching a sermon titled, No More Substitutes. And then I'm going to start in February a series called Crazy Prayer. Everybody say Crazy Prayer. Crazy Sister prayer. Mandy and I were texting one day, and about, I don't remember about what, and uh, she's like, if people heard me in my, in my private prayer, they'd think I was crazy. And I think I may have responded with, I totally understand crazy prayer. So I'm going to preach, and the Lord kind of birthed this series out of that little uh, conversation. It was only a, a she said, I said, but uh, I, so the, the first Sunday of February, I will be preaching uh, the crazy prayer series. By the way, I forgot to mention, raise your hand if you're married in this church. Everybody raise your hand if you've got a husband or a wife. Now, who, are you other people ashamed of it? Like, Kim, you're married? Kim, you're, you're married. If you're married, raise your hand. All right? Everybody raise your hand. All right? Listen, you are invited and need to come February 6th to the Paints Party House, bring a dessert. And uh, we're going to be doing a seminar. We're not. Uh, Sister Mandy and Sister Amy will be doing a seminar on couples, marriages. Doesn't mean your marriage is bad. If you've got the best marriage like the pains, then they they still need to be there. This, they can pour into the younger couple. This for all ages, of all experiences, of all backgrounds. If you are married, you need to come. If you're about to get married, you need to come. It's every Saturday night of February. Every Saturday night of February, six o'clock. Uh, make sure you're there February the sixth for the marriage seminar. Say, I'm going to be there. Yeah, y'all, 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 y'all was weak. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our message today. I want to continue 
find and, and conclude the year of Jubilee, although you're going to hear me preach a lot throughout the year on Jubilee because it is our theme of our year. Uh, today, the four part, fourth part, we've discussed over the last three weeks uh, freedom in the Levitical law that was handed out. In the Jubilee year, all slaves were set free. And we talked about being free from drugs and being free from the things that hindered us and being free from our chains of bondage. And, and then the second week, we talked about pardon. The awful, awesome gift of forgiveness that we have the ability to be forgiven. No matter how bad you've messed up, we can be pardoned of all of our sin. And then the third component of Jubilee is restoration. And I am believing that we will see our church and our families and our personal lives move out of conflict and into Jubilee. I have no doubt that we're going to cross the bridge out of the year of conflict into Jubilee. And I am praying and believing that in this 50th year, the 50th year of the Rising Fawn Church, we're going to celebrate like we've never celebrated before. And we're going to come into the house of God. We're going to exalt Him. And we're going to stand amazed at the greater works that He's going to do through us. And He's going to give, he's going to give His power. And we're going to give Him all His glory. I believe that God's going to allow us to start fresh and to have a brand new do-over. I'm believing and anticipating that the year of Jubilee will change our lives like never before. Today, I believe Jubilee has already started in this church, and we're going to celebrate Rising Bond. No more dead heads, no more knots on the walls, no more dry lands, no more bumps in the road. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in this 50th year of ministry, you're about to experience Jubilee in your church, in your family, in your life. I know I'm not only going to bless it on Sunday, I'm going to walk in Jubilee in my family on Thursdays and Fridays and Mondays and Tuesdays too. Thank God. Give Him praise for four years. Today I want to focus on the third component of Jubilee and that's restoration. Everybody say restoration. 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 Here's some simple definitions. The action of returning something to a former owner. In the Levitical law we read where the lands were returned to their first owners. So it's the action of returning something to a former owner. But look at that last word, or condition. Look at this definition. The process of repairing or renovating. Settle that in for a second. The process of repairing or renovating. In the year of Jubilee, there is restoration. There is a renovation coming. There is a repairing coming. And I know that lands are going to be returned and families are going to be returned and relationships are going to be returned. And I am declaring that in this your year of Jubilee, you're going to see restoration in all these components. I know it's time for God to restore what the enemy has stolen. The devil has wreaked havoc on our church long enough. The devil has wreaked havoc on your family, on your marriage, and in your kids long enough. And it's time for Jubilee restoration to begin in rise and fall. Now listen, I don't want you just to hear me preach. I read a quote out of some, you know, I'm always reading these blogs and these articles to make me a better preacher. And I know you're wondering why I don't read more of them. But I read something where one preacher got up into his church and he said, this is my job to preach and it's your job to listen. And if you get to the end before I do, please be patient. I will catch up with you. All right? <laughs> I'm going to invite you this morning not to listen to me as this, I'm just some lecturer or I'm just here to, I'm trying to give you a word and I want your faith while I'm preaching. So I remember a story in the Bible when the Holy Ghost fell on people as they just heard the word of God speaking. Don't you realize it's the power of the anointed word that can release the power of the Holy Ghost to fall in your life. So while I am preaching, I'm going to ask you to link in with my faith that you can see the power of restoration if your family members are out of relationship with Jesus Christ, if your household is one big fight and you haven't seen family members in a lot of years because of something that happened in 1973, I want you to pray and believe that this is the year of restoration. It's time for the church and the time of the church family to realize.
realize that God has the ability to get our families back. He's got the ability to get stuff back that the devil has stolen from you. If you used to have joy, it's time for you to have it again. If you used to overflow with peace, it's time for you to have it again. This restoration is going to come. This power of repairing and rebuilding what has been hurt by the years of abuse and what has been destroyed by the weathering of the conditions. I know that this is the day restoration occurs and renovation comes and repairing comes in Jesus' name. Amen. If it once belonged to you, if at one time it belonged to you in this year of Jubilee, it still belongs to you. Amen. What used to be yours, because we're entering into Jubilee, it's still yours. If you once celebrated, you will celebrate again. The joy you once had, you will have again. The freedom that used to cause you to dance will cause you to dance again. It is the year of Jubilee. And I'm going to take back everything the devil has stolen from me. It used to belong to me. And I'm moving into a divine season of the Almighty God. And I will see full restoration. I will have a complete restoring and a repairing of what the devil has stolen. Amen. 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 Amen means so be it. I shout out loud if you needed something from God. Amen. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. As for thee also, listen, underline this, by the blood of thy covenant. Everybody say that. By the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth the prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Anybody been in a dry place lately? Anybody been through a dry season lately? By the blood, by the covenant, God is about to send us out of the pit where there is no water. Turn to you, the stronghold. You prisoners of hope, say, I got hope. You prisoners of hope, even today do I declare that I will render double. Everybody say double. Double unto thee. It is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He has come to set the captive spirit free. He has already restored us. He wants to take us out of the dry pit and lead us beside the steel waters. He wants to restore your soul. Don't you know, in this passage, I've got hope, although I may be in prison right now. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. In my year of jubilee, prison doors will swing open. Chains will fall off. I'm going to walk through restoration. Amen. Oh my goodness. God's going to bring it to pass. And I'm not only, listen, I don't want to be satisfied. I'm not going back like it used to be. Right. Listen, I love to watch HGTV when all those great wonder property brothers and, and, and this lady who takes old homes and restores them. I don't want it like it used to be. I want my double blessing. I want my double power. I want my double joy. I want my double freedom. I ain't going back to where I was. I'm moving to a new place because in this restoration, I'm not coming back. Not only will we be restored 
in our joy and in our peace, but your health is going to be restored. Amen. Jesus has already, say already. already. He's already paid the price. Yes. He's already been tied to the whipping post. Yes. The prophets have already declared that he would have healing in his wings. And Jesus has already fulfilled the promise of the prophets. So there is only one thing for us to do. Just believe and receive. The price has already been paid. The stripes have already been taken. Don't you understand? There's healing in the name of Jesus. And in this year of Jubilee, in this year of restoration, God is going to restore healing to the body of Christ. Amen. Emotional depression, discouragement, gone. Worry and anxiety, gone. He's going to heal you emotionally. Some of you battle in your mind like you've never battled before. But in this year of Jubilee, God's going to release healing to your mind. He's going to release spiritual healing. Past hurts and past abuses from past mistakes of leaders, gone. Your valley of dryness, gone. Your lukewarm turned back to hot. Your doubt, gone. You know why? Because in this year of Jubilee, I will be emotionally sound. I'm tired of unstable, being driven by the winds and tossed by the waves. I'm going to be grounded in the Spirit of God. The Lord is still the anchor that settles my soul. I'm going to walk in emotional and spiritual healing. Physical healing, gone. I'm talking about cancer, disease, and illnesses. All gone in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. The word says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Can I tell you? Jeremiah talked about a Christ that would one day heal us. Don't you know, I may have been an outcast my whole life. and Some of you may be an outcast right now. You may be on the outside looking in. You don't have to be because in this jubilee year, you're going to move out of a place of being an outcast into a place of being called a child of the living God, an heir to the throne of God. And because of that, God's going to restore healing to us, the gift of healing. Let's open it. There's nine spiritual gifts that's talked about in the Bible. Why are they still wrapped in under the tree? Let us open each one of them and let the Holy Ghost lead us and guide us that the gifts of the Spirit can operate in this year of Jubilee. Amen. Oh, Pastor Chris, I love the idea of restoration. Oh, I love it. And I look forward to one day seeing this with my very eyes. I doubt it may come in my lifetime, but I know one day. Listen, you sound like Mary and her sister Martha. I mean, in John chapter 11, when their brother Lazarus died, you sound just like them. Jesus, if you'd only been here, our brother would not have died. Amen. If only. Do you know how many of us live in this only state? We excuse the loss of joy. We excuse our pain and we excuse our hurt. To, well, if only, if only Jesus would have been here. If only the preacher would have come by. Or if only I'd have heard better preaching. Or if only that song would have been sung. Or if only my husband wouldn't have been mean to me. If only my mama would have treated me right. If only, if only, if only. Listen, stop living in your if only. Quit trying to excuse away why your life is bad with an if only. In the story, Jesus tries to tell Martha, don't worry, he will live again. Yeah, Martha says this, oh Lord, I know he's going to live again at the resurrection. At the last day, Jesus, he will rise again. You see, she had a lot of hope in the last day. She had a lot of hope in the last day, a lot of worry about if only, but had no faith for today. You see, some of us are guilty of saying, well, one day, one day, at the end, one day, and as for today, I still suffer loss. And as for today, I still live in grief. And as for today, I still have a lot of worry. As for today, I'm still lonely. I have a broken family. As for today, I accept my pitiful situation. As for today, I'm going to... No, 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 no. Today is your jubilee. Yeah. Jesus tried to tell Martha, but Martha, I am the resurrection and life. I am the one who is able to raise him. Not at the resurrection, but right now. Yeah. Yeah. My Lord, God is trying to give you a word this morning. It's not about the last days of your existence. It's about right now. Today, 
Jesus is the power of resurrection today. He is the life everlasting, the joy unspeakable, the peace of God. Yes, Because today is the day of salvation. Restoration begins today. Today. But you've got to be put in position. I mean, was it la- I know last week I covered position. Maybe the week before I covered position. And some God has given me a whole new revelation about how the church must position itself. Remember the story in John 11? Jesus gives the command. First they said, take, he, Jesus says, take me to where they lay. Take, take me to where he is. And then Jesus gives the command to remove the stone. Amen. But Martha says, oh, no, Jesus. He's going to stink. He's been dead four days, Lord. Better not remove that stone away. And Jesus looked at Martha and said, did I not tell you to believe? Come on, girl. Finally, the stone is rolled away. The smell of death comes rushing out. But restoration was about to happen. Yeah. Listen, Amen. sometimes you got to smell the trash of death yeah. before you can realize yeah. the power of his resurrection. Yeah. But you've got to position yourself. Amen. You've got to position yourself. Church, if we'll ever learn the power of positioning, and i got a feeling you're going to hear that because normally when God begins to birth something new in me, I'll find the power of positioning in everything I teach. So let me stop with a shouting for a second and teach you to position yourself. You gotta take Jesus to the place. You want Jubilee, you want restoration, you gotta take him to that place that stinks in your life. You gotta take Jesus to the tomb where your hopes are dead, where your dreams gone, where your disappointments lay. Listen, they were hurt and disappointed because they knew that if Jesus would have got there on time, their brother would have lived. So in that tomb was disappointment in their in their friend. And the Messiah they trusted in. Some of you know exactly what that feels like. I shouldn't be living through this. I served God all my life. Why am I having a battle this hurt? Take Jesus there. Take him to the tomb right where that trouble lays. Right where that problem exists. Right where that pain is. Take him there. You see in the modern church world we have learned how to take him everywhere except to the places he needs to go. We'll take Jesus where the flowers are blooming. And we'll dance with him there. We'll take Jesus to the mountaintops with us, but he wants to go to the place where it's dead and begins to stink in your life. And some of you, if you'll only let Jesus go there, quit trying to hide it and covering up. It doesn't matter how much grass you put on top of that grave and how many flowers you plant around that grave. It is still a grave. Take Jesus. Find that place that stinks or restoration can occur. The second position, once you take him to the grave, you've got to believe. You have got to get out of his way and believe. Every promise of the word is yea and amen. It was not just for them, it is also for us. For everyone who believes, for us and for everybody that is afar off, the gift and the power of God is for us. So believe in the word. Ask God to forgive you for your doubt. Ask God to deliver you from your lack of faith. Because in the power of your faith, there's enough to move mountains. There's enough to change the world. You've got to believe in the power of a God that can. The third way to position yourself is you've got to remove the stone. In other words, you've got to obey. Jesus was not going to call out Lazarus and make him walk through that stone. He wanted access directly. So a Lazarus could come into him. Amen. Think about this for a second. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil was ripped in an instant from the top to the bottom. The veil ripped, giving us access into the holy place. Amen. So that not so Jesus could come out, but that we could go in. Mm-hmm. Jesus wanted the stone rolled away, just like he wanted the veil ripped, so that Lazarus could come out of that place and become where he was. You see, when you remove those stones in your life and you become obedient, you're opening up access and you can get to Jesus. How many of you have stones in the way of disobedience? And you're wondering why you don't feel more, although we don't walk by feelings, we walk by faith. You're wondering why you don't experience more of the anointing and you don't flow more of God. Here's why. Because you've not yet been obedient and removed the stone that gives you access. Yeah, well, that'll teach right there. If Jason Blake was preaching, he'd stop a little while and teach right there. 
Don't you see the power? It, the Bible says it is better to be obedient than to sacrifice. Yes. Some of you are laying things all on the, over the altar thinking you're holy. And God is trying to get you to be obedient in that one command he gave you. And when you can learn to be obedient in that one command and roll that stone away, you now have direct access. No longer bound, no longer dead, no longer stinking. You come out not, listen, Lazarus didn't jump out of there with the fragrance of death. He jumped out with the fragrance of life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But Brother Chris, people may smell me. We smell you anyhow, honey. <laughs> Need to put the right guard on the left side. Maybe it'll help a little bit. Listen, be obedient. Some of you, I, I can't leave the point yet because God's trying to drive this. God has given some of you some simple commands, and you've not yet been obedient, and until you do that and move that stone away, you'll never gain the access that Christ has for you. Stand out of the way, the fourth way to position yourself. Stand out of the way so God can get glory. The reason Lazarus was allowed to die and start stinking was so that he could raise him and that the people would have greater faith in who the Messiah was. The whole reason for Lazarus' illness and death was so God could get glory. So you've got to get out of the way, get in position, so that it's not about you, it's about him. He wants to show glory in your life. Get in position. Get in position and get out of the way. Some of you this morning need to stop doubting the God of restoration. You need to take Jesus right where the dead man lays in your life. Keep the faith and get out of the way because God is about to produce something in your life that will give glory to everybody around you. There's a soul for the seat next to you and they may be waiting on the glory to come off of you so they can see Jesus and be drawn to you. Where do you need your restoration today, Madison? Where do you need your restoration? Do you need it mentally? Do you need it spiritually? Do you need it physically? Listen, God wants to restore you double. God wants to restore you. Well, his head's very hard. You don't have to, the TV may be broke, but his head is hard. <laughs> Listen, double, double. If the devil's taking away your peace, then you need restoration this morning. If the devil's taking away your joy, you need restoration today. Has the devil taken away your family? Then you need restoration. It's the year of Jubilee. Let the promise of restoration begin in your life. It needs to be activated. Position yourself. I know it stinks where you are. And you're trying to cover it up and act a little more holy than what you really are. You see, Jesus can't work with phonies. Jesus can't operate with the faith. He needs to see the death of your life. He needs to see the smell, the smell of death, knowing that, hey, if I die with him, I'm going to live with him. Oh, my goodness. When I come to Christ, I take up my cross, the signal of death, and I die daily. I die daily. Are you willing to die daily? Are you willing to expose your stench so that you can be with him? Can we stop trying to hide, cover up, and perfume what God is trying to resurrect. Lord, I need to say that sentence again. It's not in my notes. I wish it were. We keep on trying to hide and cover up and perfume what Jesus is trying to resurrect. Don't you realize there's something in your life? There's a promise that Jesus is trying to bring out of you to come to life, and you just keep spraying cologne over the deadness. No, 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 no. Not this year. Come on, Rise and Fallen. Let's not, let, let's not cover up any more stench. No. If you expose it, he'll resurrect life. Jesus is the now resurrection. There's a great promise to you. But will you position yourself? Last week I talked about that woman who brought the alabaster box and she positioned herself, humbling herself, crying with a broken heart, washing the feet of Christ, which was a sign of greetings and welcome. She kissed him, another sign of friendship. She, she opened her heart, gave her very best, humbled herself, a sign of position. Remember the, the adulterer caught in the act? 
positioned herself in the hands of Christ. She was tossed at his feet, but when left alone, she did not run. She was all alone with Christ. Position yourself all alone with Christ so that Christ can do the work he needs to do. You stand with me. It's the year of Jubilee. It's the year of Jubilee. It's the time of restoration.